Hi, I'm Ed from Cyvex, and this week on Cyvex Says, we're talking about cable throttles and drive-by-wire. Back in the old days, and still some cars now, they were all physically connected via a pedal, uh, your accelerator pedal, to the, th to the inlet manifold and throttle on your engine. You press the pedal, the throttle opens, and away you go. Uh, these days with advanced ECUs and affordable drive-by-wire, um, things have got interesting. So let's have a quick talk about um, what the advantages of a drive-by-wire and why maybe you should consider it on one of your builds. Uh, first of all, um, a lot of people in the aftermarket world are fitting larger throttle bodies. Um, they want to do this so that it can uh, enable more airflow but you end up with an interesting situation. And uh, if you, you have to try and visualize, if you have um, a throttle body, a round disc like so, um, it could be smaller or larger, some are up to 100 millimeters, quite large, and the engines themselves might be fairly small relatively. So you only need to open that throttle, just a small amount, and the actual gap around the edge of the throttle is such that it will allow a lot of air to flow through with hardly any throttle input from the driver. Um, this can be a problem on cars with big turbos, uh, whereby you almost have an on-off effect of the pedal. Uh, it's very hard to control from the driver's perspective, um, making the car on track actually slower than one with a smaller throttle body, despite the fact the car with a larger throttle body is able to make more power. Uh, it's all down to drivability, and that is really where drive-by-wire comes into its own. So, we can, by means of drive-by-wire, have an electronic throttle pedal that goes to the ECU that then sends a signal to the drive-by-wire unit that enables you to program the position of the throttle pedal versus the position of the throttle on the drive-by-wire. Normally, you press a pedal, the throttle would open together. But you can actually have a situation where you open the throttle more and the throttle on the engine the plates only open a little bit so you can do that and then what happens is after a certain amount where you know you just want full throttle the last po portion you can program this can just open it all the way um, and in doing so you've created a um, a nicer relationship between the driver and the power delivery of the engine now that's kind of fairly straightforward when you think about it and quite obvious but there are other tricks you can do as well um, we obviously want boost control, and we can control boost by means of turbo external wastegates or just wastegates using solenoids, and there's all various different ways. But another thing that OE manufacturers are doing is using the throttle itself to control boost. Um, now, you'll see this potentially if you've ever tried to turn up the boost on a modern car uh, by old fashioned means of bleed valves and so on. It often doesn't work. And this will be because the throttles are actually closing up, um, even though you've added more boosting. So you can use this as kind of a, a protection as well. Um, it wouldn't ordinarily use boost control via drive-by-wire like that, but it does offer you a way of removing control of the throttle from the driver for conditions which the engine is otherwise unhappy with. Um, if your engine isn't warmed up enough, this is another great one. We can limit the amount that the throttle will open on the engine due to a lack of engine coolant temperature. Um, this is another great one that's for, our, for people like us who tune cars in the aftermarket. Everyone says, oh, I'd never drive my car hard when it's cold. Um, I've got neighbors down the road who every 10, uh, 10 minutes past eight in the morning, you hear their little car disappearing off down the road on full boost and it's only been running for 30 seconds. Um, but we can limit the amount of throttle and we can prevent people from opening or putting too much load into a cold engine. It's also another safety feature. If we um, are experiencing uh, an overboost situation, despite other methods of controlling it, we can use the throttle to the ECU to limit the amount of throttle opening um, and 
bring that back under control. We can use it as a temporary loss uh, power reduction for traction control, that's another main one. So if you experience too much wheel slip, we don't necessarily have to control it by just cutting fuel handle or ignition. We can also, also pull back on the throttle. Um, the other thing you've got with uh, drive-by wire, which you don't have with uh, traditional cable throttles, is idle control. You don't need to worry about air bypass solenoid valves. You don't need to worry about stepper motors. All of this can be done on the same unit. So you're bringing together all sorts of separate elements onto now one single unit controlled by software. Um, so these are just some of the reasons and some of the things that maybe you'd want to consider as an option for any future products or builds. Uh, Drive-by wire um, offers you several advantages over a system with cable. Uh, and I've not even covered all of them. We could like launch control. Um, there's all sorts of other things you can do, anti-lag. These are features which would norm ordinarily require external uh, bits and bobs, valves, solenoids, air bypass, whatever, bolted onto the engine that now can all be done just from simply fitting a drive-by-wire unit and having the correct ECU. One of ours is great for controlling it. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it interesting, give it a like. If you have any questions, you can ask them below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and keep an eye out for future videos.